Good morning everyone. This mass is being live streamed from St. Gerard's Monastery with the community which is resident here. The monastery is our home, our self-contained and safe space to which we are all confined. Here we live while maintaining all the necessary distances and safe practices. Since our daily program includes the liturgy, we are extending this celebration to you as a sign of solidarity and a token of God's consolation as we share what we have. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, also called the Divine Mercy Sunday. As we gather here this morning to celebrate this Sunday's Eucharist, let us rejoice with the whole church throughout the world as we remember and celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Today is also Divine Mercy Sunday, a day on which we celebrate the release of divine grace for the forgiveness of sin. Let us prepare for this Eucharist with a few moments of silence. Let us stand and join in the entrance song. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we are celebrating already the second Sunday of Easter and it is also Divine Mercy Sunday. We all meet people who make things seem very easy. Thomas is one of them, even though we call him a doubter. And in today's gospel, he declares, until I put my hands on his wounds, I will not believe. Then a few lines later, he exclaims, my Lord and my God. And as Paul reminds us in today's second reading, there is joy in the knowing. So yes, we are gathered here knowing that what we believe in is certain, is true. The knowing gives us joy, gives us hope. So let us approach the Lord, wherever we are following this Mass, God is very close. 
today in Divine Mercy Sunday, we celebrate God's flowing mercy upon us. No one is left out of his touch. We need that touch. We need more than human maturity to survive. We need even a space in our hearts for the unimaginable, for that something special God is allowing us to know, to experience in faith. Let us ask forgiveness. Lord, for the times that we leave no space, no room in our hearts for what is unimaginable, playing it safe and sticking to our schedules, to what we know, not allowing you to reveal yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we ask forgiveness even for hiding our doubts, our struggles, while you encourage us to be ourselves, so that touching our reality, we can allow you into that reality, whatever it may contain. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we ask forgiveness for faking sometimes our experience of faith, for not allowing our joy to be real. Lord, we ask forgiveness for the times when our joy has just been produced by ourselves. We do not allow your spirit to touch us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us praise God together. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal feast kindled the, the fate of your people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole 
group of believers was united, heart and soul. No one claimed for his own use anything he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. This is the word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount His deeds. I was punished. I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord for His good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoilt or soiled and never fade away, because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation, which has been prepared, is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sort of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will be, have been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible, even though it bears testing by fire. And then you will have praise and glory and honor. 
You did not see him, yet you love him. And still without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described because you believe and you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. The Word of the Lord. Because you have seen me, happy those who have not seen me, but still believe. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Until I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. <clears throat> then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I am really waiting for this second Sunday of Easter because this character of Thomas really inspires me. He always shows up so very reliably on the second Sunday of Easter. So Thomas somehow manages to sneak out when the other ten are there 
and they get to meet Jesus, they see him alive personally, they can feel the gaze of his love on them, they can feel his mercy, they hear those words, peace be with you, words of great consolation, but Thomas knows nothing of this. I mean, we can point fingers, but he had his own reasons. Possibly he needed some space. We all need space sometimes. It could be that was his way of grieving for his lost friend. We label Thomas a doubter. In the translation we use, Jesus himself tells him, do not doubt. So we feel safe. It's okay to label Thomas as a doubter. Jesus then tells him and he tells us to, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. So, even in the response Jesus gives, there seems to be more. It is always like that. There is always more. So let us go a bit into what, what is happening. First of all, a thing I like about Thomas is that he goes straight to the point. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and my hand into his side, I will not believe. So there seems to be some unfinished business here. Thomas had seen Jesus die on the cross. He could not reconcile what the others were saying and what he had seen with his own eyes. But in his request, he also shows that he knows what he is looking for. He knows how he is to recognize his Lord through the scars. Imagine you have unfinished business with someone and you have something to tell that person, but you don't have time. What will be the first or the second thing you will tell that person the next time you meet him or her? Probably you will just speak what is on your mind. And that is what Thomas seems to be doing. He is speaking something that is on his mind. He wants to get past his difficulty. And it is interesting that even in the presence of the angel, Mary too asks, how can this be? Is she doubting? No. She is simply discerning. Is this really God I am dealing with here? If so, then I have no problem. I am his handmaid. And we can imagine Thomas thinking, can it really be so easy? Jesus never chose the easy way. They make it look so easy. I can only know him by the scars. This is not an easy fate I seek. I seek something more. So it can be that for Thomas that was the issue. More than doubting, he was seeking. He was expressing the desire of one who is seeking an adult fate. After all, what he was asking was nothing exceptional. He was merely asking for what the others had already got. Wouldn't we do the same, possibly, probably? So then why does Jesus say, you have come to believe because you have seen me? Again, let's go into this a bit more. Imagine Jesus asking you, is there some room in your heart for the unimaginable? If there is no room in my heart for the unimaginable, am I doubting? It can be, I am following. It can be, I am following what others say, what others believe. That can be a sign of a trusting faith. After all, even children learn that way. Children trust those who teach them, those who lead them. When they are small, they trust that their parents are always the best. They are always right. But there will come a time when children will doubt. And that is necessary. We know it from our own experience. If it does not happen, there will be no human maturity. Because you cannot live life always following what others say and do. My choices have to become my own. That was what the people in the village told the Samaritan woman. Now we believe not just because you told us, but because we heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the savior of the world. And that knowing is so important. Knowing means that I desire an adult faith, which is so different from human maturity, 
Sometimes we just stick to human maturity. We consider it a very high place, being humanly mature. But being humanly mature can mean that I just stick to the beaten path, that I just do what I have always done. It seems that my experience can be limiting the scope of my vision, that any way forward I perceive is being limited by my own experience of life. It can mean that I am playing it safe, that I am taking no unnecessary risks. But a mature adult faith means the opposite. It means leaving room in my heart for what is unimaginable. And this involves a lot of questioning and doubting and searching. And this is the only way that faith can become my own faith, a faith that is rooted in God but which is also rooted in my own particular reality, not your reality. You have to do that for yourself, and I have to do it for myself. I cannot do it for you, and you cannot do it for me. We like to remind ourselves that we are children of God, and we do right, because that is who we are. As adults, we need to remember that we have to pursue a childlike faith, not a childish faith which means that we rely less on what we have acquired and sometimes even this human maturity can be something that we acquire, something that we rely on. But we have to rely less on human maturity and seek more wonder and awe and more purity in our walk with God. And even as we heard in today's second reading, purity means purifying, it is pur our faith is purified through suffering, through expecting one thing and finding another and then trying, as Thomas was trying to do, to reconcile the two. It requires a lot of humility. It requires backtracking sometimes when we discover that we have lost our way. But that will result in a faith that is truly rooted in God and in my own particular reality. I am sure that children have plenty of room in their hearts for what is unimaginable. But unfortunately, when we grow up, many of us lose the ability. And then we just become humanly mature. The responses to life become planned and programmed. And my life becomes limited without me knowing it. I think that I am free, but in fact I am not. True, everything can seem to be under control and in its proper place, but that is a false reality. And even as Pope Francis reminded us, when there is a crisis, somehow all that false hope and certainty comes crashing down. And then I realize that in my uncertainty, who I need is Christ. Being children of God does not mean that we remain preschoolers. Being a preschooler in faith is a safe thing, too. But now we are no longer preschoolers in all the other areas of life. So what about my faith? Am I still stuck in my preschool years? We know that if we remain children in matters of faith, our faith will be very vulnerable. It will be open to every negative influence. Our motivations, shame and guilt, sometimes have more to do with a childhood experiences of punishment, perhaps, or desire for recognition, than with our evolving relationship with Christ. So the end result, what we truly desire, is to be able to let go, to relax, not, in, not into nothingness, but into the loving embrace of Jesus, being aware that he is at the center of all we experience. But as we said, this involves letting go of all the attachments. And the word tells us that all these attachments are essential and necessary. So it is difficult to let go. I remember when people used to ask my mom, how, are, how is your son about me? The first thing she used to tell them was, oh, he is not living here anymore. Sort of, he is not under my wings anymore. He is living his heart's desire. Sure, I was still her only son. She was missing me lots. But I was an adult and a priest. And that made a huge difference to me and to her as well. So perhaps today Thomas is reminding us 
to think of ourselves as adult children of God. All along, Thomas is leading us to seek a deeper and mature human faith, not just to stick to our own experience, to what we have experienced, because that can be so limiting. Even in these days when we are fully or partially confined, sometimes others' experience can be challenging as well. But precisely, that is a motivation to, f to check, is there room in my heart for the unimaginable? Or without knowing it, I have ended up losing my freedom. So let us seek more wonder and awe, and more purity, yes, and humility, which comes from that inner suffering, when we know that we have not yet found everything we seek. There is still more. There is joy in the knowledge, as we were reminded in the second reading. That is where our Easter joy comes from. There is joy in the knowing, and that joy brings hope, because I am certain that what is going to happen is going to happen, and I can celebrate. Let us end with reminding ourselves what we read in that second reading Peter was telling us, although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him, you believe in him, and you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Lord, that is what we desire. Grant our heart's desire. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us stand. Even though when expressing our faith we use a formula that has been handed on for many, many centuries, our faith is that and much more because it includes each and every human life. So even as we say the words together, let us ask the spirits to truly make them come alive in our hearts. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, light from light, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray now for what the world needs, that God's love and mercy can be felt and experienced by everyone. The response is, Christ is risen, let us rejoice. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Let, let us rejoice. For the Church, let our faith communities be places of goodwill, devoted to teaching, breaking of bread, fellowship, prayer, prayer and service to those in need. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Christ has risen. risen. Let, Let us rejoice. For all countries around the world, as we grapple with the effects of the pandemic, that the deep challenges the world is facing bring about a sense of goodwill among people and a deeper awareness of the spiritual dimensions of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Let, us Let us rejoice. rejoice. For those who lead our nation, that they may show integrity in the way they live, be wise in their decision making, and act in the best interest of the people, always having deepest concern for the poor and vulnerable among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ is risen, let us rejoice. For missionaries in foreign lands, that these workers will be sustained and encouraged in their ministry by the faithful support of faith communities in their homelands and by the joy of the gospel that they share. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ is risen, let us rejoice. For mothers who cannot feed their children, that there will be an end to this suffering, that people's generosity will flow and political structures renewed to assure sufficient food for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ is risen, let us rejoice. For the people of Tonga, Vanuatu, and Fiji, that they will be supported as they face the devastation and loss caused by Cyclone Herald. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ is risen, let us rejoice. For the Jewish community, remembering the Holocaust this week, and for the Muslim community, observing Ramadan, May Christians unite with them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ is risen, let, risen. let us rejoice. In the silence of our hearts, let each one of us make our own personal intentions. God of life, through real events, you redefine our faith, that we who have not seen may yet believe. Give us strength to work towards a world in which everyone can thrive by caring for one another and for the whole of your creation. We pray in the name of Jesus, the risen one. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness, who have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness, who have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to load you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, you love the human race, and you always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, as we are gathered here by his love. As once for the disciples, so now for us today, he opens scripture and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask, that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, 
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with John, our Bishop, with your entire people, you have made your own. Open our eyes to see the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and deeds to comfort those who are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that all may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ. Remember all the dead whose fate you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your faith, and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant to us also, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. that there is joy in the knowing, let us pray the prayer Christ taught us, asking for more humility and awe and wonder and purity in our walk with God and with one another. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
to go here, to be my atiatua, behold the Lamb of God, <clears throat> behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we prepare to say the prayer of spiritual communion, <clears throat> let us remember that the resurrection is the source of our joy. Knowing the power, experiencing the power of the resurrection, that is what God desires to give us. That is the communion we have in Him. Let us truly desire knowledge, not merely heart, knowledge or mind knowledge but it is something more than that it is unimaginable the joy when god draws us close to himself let us ask god to give us this mercy this beautiful relationship with him and that on our part we will do anything possible to remain in this relationship Together, Jesus, my Lord, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come nevertheless and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, and make it like your own. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself completely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.